If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 51 tonight. Psalm 51. And I've entitled tonight's lesson, and I kind of struggled over the title. There was two that I really liked, and I settled in on this one, uh, Repentance. But the other one, I, I mean, you could write this somewhere, uh, uh, Restore. Uh, and the, the neat thing, and you'll see this as we go down through here, uh, when there is repentance, there is restoration. And so I was just kind of struggling back and forth, but uh, let me give you the outline that I have. Number one, uh, cleanse me, repentance. There needs to be a cleansing process. Uh, number two, purge me. There needs to be a purging process. Uh, number three, restore me. And then number four, deliver me. And, you know, if you uh, remember King David, uh, the Bible said at one time he was a man after God's own heart. Uh, he was king of Israel, and uh, he really uh, was a good king. Uh, you know, again, he couldn't uh, build the temple because he was a man of war. Uh, and also, what he is known for, probably more than anything, was with his uh, deal with Bathsheba. And folks, I, I call it the big two. All right. You know, I've, I've even had it even when I've witnessing, you know, well, I haven't killed anyone and I have not committed adultery. And King David did both of those. And that's why I believe this lesson uh, is so important. Uh, and let me just give you the bottom line right off the bat. Folks, I don't care what you have done in your past. God can forgive you and God can restore you. And we need to know that, okay? And I understand there are people that have a real hard time with jail, house, salvations, you know? But again, I can't say what's real and what's not real or who got saved and who didn't get saved. All I know, according to the Word of God, uh, that if you'll repent of your sin, if you will invite Jesus to come into your life, you will be saved. And so uh, tonight I want to look at David and you have to re remember also, uh, he sat on this for almost one year. It wasn't an automatic repentance with him. Uh, you know, he, he sat on it, and it took that long for him to come clean. And if you remember, Nathan was the one, the prophet, to come along, and he shared the story about the lamb, and he said, you are the man. Okay, so that's, that was the drawing line there. That was where the line was drawn in the sand, and uh, he truly, I believe, repented there, and uh, God used him. Number one, verse one, cleanse me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Three things there, I think, and, and words that we need to point out in the first part of that mercy. I thank God for his mercy. Okay, mercy is not giving you what you deserve. Okay, we are all sinners. None of us deserve to go to heaven, but it's because of God's mercy. And then the second part is in the second part of that verse, loving kindness. God loves us. No matter what we do, God loves us. He doesn't like our actions at times. He doesn't like our words at times, but God has never quit loving you. So when you think about the mercy of God and the love of God, you have to understand how important these things are in our lives. And the other thing is grace. God's riches. We're, we're under the mercy of God. God loves us, but we also experience the grace of God. Okay? And God's grace uh, is just, I, you know, I love the song. I don't know who doesn't love the song. Amazing grace. I like the other part. There's, there's two different kinds of amazing grace. There's a newer one, and my chains are gone. I, I love that one also. But folks, it is the grace of God uh, that allowed you to be saved. So God doesn't hold things against you, okay? But God loves you. He shows you mercy, and he shows you grace. Blot out my transgressions, and we know transgressions are sins, and wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. You know, the washing process 
uh, you know, ladies, you, you know, uh, when we were kids, you know, if there was a rain and there was a mud puddle, we were in them. And so, you know, my mom used Tide and, you know, all, all kinds of uh, things. My grandma used, uh, is there lye soap? Does that sound right? Lye soap? And, uh, you know, the whole thing is, is getting things clean. And that's what David is saying. David had come to the point in his life where he said, I can't do this anymore. I can't act like this didn't happen. Folks, I'm telling you, he was the cause of Uriah's death. And here's the thing you have to understand also. In his mercy and grace, there's still consequences to the sin that you commit. And if you remember, he lost that son. That son died, and I believe it was part of, you know, of justice. Uh, and and God, God loves him. God gave him grace. God showed him mercy. Uh, but he had to be disciplined uh, for what he had done. And then cleanse me from my sin. And, and even like the dirt that gets on clothes, uh, I believe with all my heart, there are times when we sin that we even feel dirty. All right? And I thank God, thank God for 1 John 1, 9. I don't know how many times I have quoted this in my life. And, uh, you know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now, here's the deal about repentance. One, repentance is not confessing because you got caught. See, I, I, you know, I worked with youth for, for, well, actually 16 years. I was a youth director for 14 years, but I worked for youth. And a lot of the youth had this deal. It wasn't wrong to them if they didn't get caught. And folks, that's wrong. That's a wrong attitude to have, okay? And the other thing is, is if you're just going through the motions of confession, this is what I'm supposed to do. And folks, that is not repentance. I looked up the word repentance, and uh, there's three definitions that I found. Number one, a deep sorrow for one's sin. I like the word deep there, a deep sorrow for one's sin. Number two, an honest confession that you have broken a commandment of God. It's an honest confession. And again, we try to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, excuse away our sin sometimes, well, I'm not that bad, or I'm not as bad as someone. Folks, that's, that's not repentance. And number three, a determination that you will do your best not to let it happen again. Matter of fact, Luke 13, Luke 13, this is Jesus speaking, and I, I think it's very important. Verse 5, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all, you will all likewise uh, perish. You have repented when you came to Christ. And folks, when we sin, we need to repent. We need to say, oh, you know, this isn't this bad. We don't need to say this wasn't that bad. You know, there's a lot of sins worse than that. Anytime you come under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you need to repent. Repentance needs to be a part of that. Because see, there's no degrees of sin. All right? Sin is just sin. But the consequences, like I said, and I, have you noticed that in the Old Testament too? The bigger the sin, the larger the sacrifice. I mean, study that. But I'm simply saying we have to understand we cannot stop the judgment of God or the chastisement of God, but we can come clean. We can get clean. Verse 3, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and acknowledging, and the two words I, I like to use, admit it and quit it. It's not just enough to admit it. You have to quit it. True repentance, all right, means that I am going to stop this. I'm not going to have this as a pattern in my life. My sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned. And it's kind of like the kid that got his hand caught in the cookie jar and got caught red-handed, and, you know, the kid looks at his mom and says, I didn't know you were coming in here. <laughs> you know, and folks, it, it makes no difference there. He got caught, and David was the same way. David got caught, man, Nathan, you know, exposed his sin, and he is finally admitting it to God. He is confessing, and he is getting things right 
with God. And folks, that's the bottom line. We may have offended somebody. We may have took something from somebody, but you have broken the heart of God. Okay? He, he, he hates sin. He does not hate you. He hates sin. And again, you know, I don't want to put a guilt trip or a burden on you. That's not what I'm trying to do. We need to thank God for the forgiveness of sin. And done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And I know David had to feel like, you know, he's been carrying this burden and carrying this burden. Everybody in the, key, everybody in the kingdom knew what took place and knew what happened. Okay, and he would not confess, he would not repent, and he, he, was, he was judged a different way because of his sin. And he is coming clean. I don't know about you, but man, sometimes in my confession time, uh, a burden is lifted off of me. You know, when I, when I truly repent, when I truly say, God, uh, you know, I, I, I talk to myself. You know, do y'all talk to yourselves? Does anybody else ever do that? Okay, thank you. And do you know why I talk to myself? I want expert advice. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. I'm just kidding. Uh, I really do. I talk to God. I just say, you know, I don't know how you put up with me. I don't know why you don't just kill me on the spot. I mean, there's times, and again, I'm not killing folks. I have not committed adultery, I promise you. But I'm simply saying, when you come to repentance, it's like I'm offending God. Okay, and God, you are so patient with me, you know, and, and again, I call it revival. You know, you realize you can have personal revival, whether we're having revival at the church or not. I mean, you can do that, folks. And I'm telling you, my favorite time to study and prepare for Sundays is Saturday from six o'clock to nine o'clock. I have a, I have, I go through, I do all my last minute changes and then the last hour I spend in prayer, okay? And that's where I, man, I say, okay, God, here I am. It's kind of like asking your wife, uh, you know, you know uh, a question and then saying this, if you got the guts to do it, be honest with me, <laughs> okay? And, you know, some wives are and some just kind of, oh, you're not that bad. You're okay. No, all right, I, I'm terrible. I, I want to hear it. Okay, so anyway, we need to move on. All right, cleanse me. And I believe with all my heart, he got cleansed. Number two, uh, verse five, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. And he wasn't making excuses. Folks, we all were brought forth in iniquity. We all were born with a sin nature. If you have a mother and you have a father, they are sinners and you have a sin nature. Tell a kid, tell a three-year-old not to do something. Just tell them, and th I'm telling you, do it, okay? One time Jonathan did, we had a real nice stereo when he was, he was three years old, and he went and turned the stereo on, and, and it just was blasting. And Lori's dog was sitting beside Jonathan, and Jonathan knew he'd gotten in trouble, and he looks at the dog and says, the dog did it. <laughs> Ask Lori. We just, I mean, we couldn't even discipline him from laughing, okay? Uh, you know, you don't have to teach someone to sin. And that's what he's saying. And in sin, my mother conceived me. Behold, you are truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me known to wisdom. And again, the truth of the inward parts is deep down inside, folks, we know when we do something wrong. Okay, like I said earlier, David had sinned and he would not fess up for, for pretty much a year's time. And folks, that's way too long. I, I you know, I've, I've said this hundreds of times since I've been here. And folks, you need to do this before you go to sleep. This is part of confession. It's part of repentance. Am I right with God? Am I right with my family? Am I right with my fellow man? And I promise you, God will give you the answer to all three. And if any of them three are yes, you spend time with God, depending on where your family is, you know, because, you know, if you wait to about 11 o'clock at night and you wake a brother or sister up, they're probably not going to be excited about you calling them at that time. 
But as soon as you can, you make those things right. And then again, a lot of times it's either friends or work associates. You know, sometimes we need to go in the next day and just say, you know, I didn't, I didn't react right. I didn't say the right thing yesterday. And here's the word, folks. You need to say this. I was wrong. Okay. I am sorry. Please forgive me. I believe all three of those are part of repentance. Okay. And I think all three of those are vital. And we need to do that. Verse 7 Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. And we know that hyssop was a plant, and, you know, they had the kind of the ends there, and the priests would come in and they would sprinkle either water or blood, you know, at the sacrifices and all that was going there. But he just basically saying, hey, I know the blood covers me. I know, I, I know I'm forgiven. But you, you, need, you have to understand, even in the sacrifices in the Old Testament, you know, an animal had to die, okay, to make a blood sacrifice. And again, re- relate it to Jesus Christ. Folks, he was the Lamb of God. All right, he paid the ultimate uh, price for our sin. And so we need to understand uh, the, the weight of that. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Man, I love Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1. The Bible says in Isaiah 1, verse 16, wash yourself make yourself clean, put away the evil uh, of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. Now here's the verse. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Well, I don't know about you, but that that verse just resonates in my heart and in my mind. If I will confess, if I will repent, if I am sincere in what I'm doing, I am telling you, you know, we, are, we will be clean, thoroughly clean as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And so we can see, you know, there uh, just the, the refreshing, uh, the starting over, uh, the restoration uh, there in that. Uh, Wash me not be whiter as snow. Back in our text, verse 8, make me hear the joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. And again, he didn't break any bones in David's life, but it was as he was broken. Okay? Everyone, you know, a lot of times when you're like David, you're trying to block it out and you block it out and you block it out and then it pops up, okay? And, and you know, you just can't live with it. You know, you, you, you can, you know, survive, but you can't live with it. It's what this is talking about. Hide your face from my sins and blot, blot, uh, blot out all my iniquities. And again, I think the bones and broken is just pain and hurt uh, that you have in your life. Now, number three, restoration. Restore me. I love this. Here's where it gets good, folks. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And folks, unconfessed sins weighs you down. It would be like being out on a boat, okay, and you're going swimming. You got your swim trucks on. You jump, you jump in, and man, you just swim away. The weight of sin would be as you, if you were just fully dressed and jumped off the boat. Okay, you're dog paddling, you're just trying to get to a ladder. Okay, sin can, you know, hold us down. Sin can burden us that much, and it should burden us. And folks, one of the best signs that you are saved is that you, you are, you know, uh, you know, sin breaks your heart. You know when you sin. That is one of the best ways to know that you are saved. And so this creation, and, and that's the one thing about God. You know, we, we get historical a lot of times, okay? Even in our marriages, I didn't say hysterical, historical. We'll go back to something one of them did a, a month ago. But that's not the way God is, folks. God start every news, 
Every day is a new day with him. He is restoring David. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And folks, there are a lot of times sin affects our our, uh, countenance. It, It affects our joy. It affects us. But David is feeling clean again. All right, he fessed up. You know, he, he got right with God. He repented, and it was now he clean, He was cleansed. Verse 11, do not cast away from me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I know, and I've heard it only one time, I've heard it preached, and, and again, that you can lose your salvation. And folks, there are multiple verses that teach you can't lose your salvation. But do you know what you do when you're when you have unconfessed sin in your life? You lose your power. Okay, that Holy Spirit power. The Holy Spirit's not away from you. Okay, it's a manifestation of the Spirit. Okay, there are times in my life that the Spirit is strong. I'll tell you one good thing. Uh, you know, people comment on our guest cards, and I, it's been probably two or three months ago. At the bottom of the card, it literally said we could feel this. It was their first time we could feel the Holy Spirit here. When we walked in the door, we could feel the Holy Spirit. Folks, that is so important to true worship. And that's what he's doing. He's restoring him, okay? And even some people, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, associate this with an anointing, okay? And I'm not doing a charismatic thing or anything, But if you look in the Old Testament, there was anointings, okay? Just like Saul was anointed king, and then he messed up. And, you know, I mean, mean, basically, you know, God took his life, if you want to read the whole story. But he anointed David as king, okay? There's that special anointing. I think our comparison is the laying on of hands that we do with ministers and with deacons, okay? And and that, that truly is a special time. Verse 12, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted to you. Matthew 18, Matthew 18, verse 22. Matthew 18. Oh, you already got it. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, Lord, how often shall my brother sinned against me, and should I forgive him seven, up to seven times? And the Bible says in verse 22, Jesus said to him, I do not say up to seven times, but up to 70 times. Let me ask you a question. How many times do you think God has forgiven you in your lifetime? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay, today, you want to just go today? (laughs) Folks, I'm just telling you, we have Forgiveness. If we truly repent, if we go through the cleansing process, if we realize that this is a sin against God, folks, there's nothing any better than the forgiveness of God. Last thing, deliver me. Verse 4, deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. And again, he's talking about Uriah the Hittite there. The God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing, allow your righteousness. And folks, even, you know, in singing, you cannot praise God like you should if you haven't repented. If you, you know, again, it takes away the joy. It, it affects so many things in our lives, folks. It really does. Oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth and show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God, now here it is, are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. And contrite basically is, uh, you know, it, it's repentance. Folks, that's the key right there. God, man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. Oh, these, oh God, you will not despise. Folks, he's looking. And sometimes he has to break us, folks. You know, when we get stubborn, and we're not going to confess it, and we just ignore it, he has to break us. And it's during those times, I know, you know, and again, it hasn't happened, you know, multi, multi times in my life, 
But there are some times I have cried so hard that I just couldn't cry anymore. I don't know if y'all have been there before, but I have. And once you come out of that, they're just you feel lighter. I don't know. It's something about the tears. I don't, you know, I haven't done a study on that. Uh, but that is what it reminds me of, a broken and contrite heart. Father, thank you for the day. And God, I thank you for repentance. And Lord, I thank you for restoration. God, I thank you that uh, King David, King of Israel, is the writer here. And God, he was just uh, getting right with you. God, he was just, uh, you know, realizing that what he had did was a terrible thing. And God, I thank you for stories in, in Scripture like this. And Lord, there's such restoration from you. And God, you know, I, I know sometimes man judges us very harsh, and there's not forgiveness with mankind in several situations of life. But God, I thank you that you forgive us. If no one else forgives us, God, you forgive us. And God, I thank you for the, just the blessing of restoration. I thank you for the blessing of the forgiveness of sins. And I thank you that every day we can start afresh and anew. Uh, so God, just continue to be with us. Again, thank you for the reminder of the importance of repentance and restoration in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.